Welcome back to the Age of Asparagus. So we might want to add that same cloud that shrouds our mountain here that Bob Ross creates. And we can do that really simply, of course, by going back to our cloud brush. Now, you notice something there. I actually changed my icon to look more like the cloud brush, so I'd have a better idea of what it was. I can show you how to do that before we go any further. Let's go back up to the brush engine. To update most aspects of a brush preset you've made is pretty easy. For example, if my diameter here is 100 and I wanted to make it 105 by default, I could just click overwrite brush and it would save that new default diameter to the brush preset. But in order to update the icon, we actually need to save it as a new brush preset. So here's how I'm going to do it. Let's, let's go back to this cloud brush. And instead of having a sponge here, if I reload the icon, say I want it to look something more like it's the two inch brush that Bob Ross actually uses to do this. So what I'm going to do is first off, let's rename the BR cloud brush we currently have by hitting this little edit icon. And I'm going to call this one BR cloud brush old. Okay. And now we want to get the icon we want. So let's go, uh, let's change our filter here to all. Let's search for a bristle brush uh, right here. Bristle large, that looks good. And I'm going to load this icon. I'm just, I'm just choosing this brush so I can load this big icon here. Now I'm going to switch back to my, can we do BR here? underscore. There it is. I'm going to switch back to my old cloud brush just so I can use it to paint on here. I'm going to change what color I'm on. I'm on white. That's okay. I can put a little bit of white here just so we know what this brush does. I'm going to switch to phthalo blue, then go back and add some of those blue just to give us an idea of what this brush is doing and what we're using it for. So that's the icon I want to use. And these are all the settings. I'm back on my cloud brush old. Now we're going to save a new brush preset with these settings. To get that icon, I need to click load scratch pad thumbnail here. So it'll get the thumbnail we created. I don't want it to be called old copy. I'm going to get rid of that on the end. And it's just going to be BR cloud brush. Now, if I right click, notice that our old cloud brush has disappeared from our pop-up palette. And I believe it has gone from our BR tags as well. If we click Bob Ross, it's not there anymore. So let's go find uh, or new cloud brush, here it is. I'm going to right click it, assign a tag, Bob Ross. Now out here, we should have our cloud brush back with its new icon. Okay, let's add this little mountain here. So I've got my cloud brush. I'm going to choose some a little bit of white here. And now I notice that our mountain is a lot lower. The one I drew anyway is a lot lower. The top of Bob Ross's mountain is up past the top of these clouds. So crazy thing is, I can just select my mountain layer and I can go to this four arrowed button here, the move tool, and I can just grab my mountain and move it up. Let's send her right on up to about there. Yeah, okay. Now, before we make our cloud, let's go back to the brush tool, which you can do by hitting B or selecting the paintbrush icon at the top left of the toolbar. I've got white selected. Last thing I need is a layer. So I'm going to create a new layer here. I am going to move it to the top in case I want to switch mountains later. I got lots of mountains. I want this to be the, call it the cloud in front. And here we go, let's make this cloud live right in here. Good. And this neat little brush here, notice how it just rotates automatically as I move? Now that you have a, a better idea about how that brush engine works, we can take a look at those settings. If I go into the brush engine here, the pixel, what that is, is the rotation. So this has something that's changing the rotation. But what's changing the rotation? It's just random. Each of these options has a, a fuzzy section here. And if you click fuzzy, it just means 
that the rotation will be random every time which gives you some neat effects sometimes. As well, the brush tip, this one uses a texture, this texture here. So you can see if you hit once, you get that texture, and every time you hit, it's rotated randomly. And when you draw with it, it creates a neat effect. Now, it's not consistent, it's not a smooth line, it's just, you can see them appear every few pixels. That's because of this spacing option down here. Tons of settings here. If I set this, for example, if I just change this, and I draw, you're going to notice it's going to be much smoother, right? There's not those gaps in it. And if I change the spacing right down to zero to make it consistent, you're just going to get that straight line. It's still rotating every time, but it's pretty much producing a blotch all the time. It also gets laggy, you can see there. Okay, let's let's get that back here. I'm just going to cancel out of here. And I'm going to reselect my brush so it goes back to its defaults. There we go. Titanium white. Let's shroud this mountain. And we're going to attach it to this guy right here, just like Bobby does. Most of this stuff down here is going to get... We'll get... Cover all that up. Let's keep some of that blue, actually. I like it. We can smooth it in. Okay, and we'll take our... Take our smudge brush. So I'm not actually too concerned with uh, the stuff down here. This is all going to get covered up eventually anyway. We just want to nicely shroud the mountain here. And that's good enough. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying the series and learning a few things. See you next time.